I, I know how fake these things can get, and I feel like you're a real person. I can't do the fake thing, man. Yeah, I got to no. tell you. Yeah, I know. You're a real girl. I get it. <laughs> I'm like, okay. All right. Well, that's then... how I come back because I really, really despise being interviewed. Like, I hate it. Why? Not from you, though. Oh, thanks. Welcome back to the studio, uh, Omar Apollo. How are you? I'm good. I'm happy to be back in the studio. It's nice to have you. With you. The last time you were here, we had a great time. Yeah, we did. Uh, and I remember, <laughs> so there was this, you, you gave me my first ever, I don't know, man, I'm, I'm 37, so I don't have the lingo. Can you help me out with this? <laughs> it's the TikTok thing where, oh God, I can hear myself. Just, well, no, say it. I can hear what myself you... gaining a cardigan and <laughs> t- t- taking gold bond powder while I say this. You know, like there's like a TikTok thing where like people are talking and then other people afterwards just like mouth along to the original oh, TikTok thing. Oh yeah, 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 like um, like a synchronized kind of thing. It just became like a meme. Yeah, we became a meme. You're yeah, right. Yeah, we were memed. You talk, you guessing that I was a Taurus, and me telling you that I didn't know anything about astrology. Yeah, everyone thought we were flirty. Ah, come on! <laughs> and I got all these. I got all these. Did you see these things too? I got all these like TikTok things. Yeah. Of like. You became a sex symbol. Well, I, I, I <laughs> remained a sex symbol. Is what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I further uh, cemented my status as a public radio bearded, right. banjo playing sex symbol. I love that. Not yeah. everyone. Like now, everyone's got got to come here. They got to stop here in Canada. They have to. That's what they say ever since that moment. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm not taking credit for that no you're amazing no yeah, it's all you my friend it's no, all you no, it's no. all you and you know what you get 10 percent. <laughs> okay i'll do that yeah i hope hope you like 25 bucks <laughs> <laughs> I, I need 25 bucks yeah you know i got it for you how did last night go you played bud stage last night yeah why didn't you go uh i don't know I'm, that's I'm, fucked I'm, up <laughs> Because I'm a Taurus. I don't trust you. That's I'm a Taurus. supposed to be loyal. <laughs> Is that thing? I thought I was supposed to be stubborn. Uh, grounded. <laughs> that feels right. I was grounded, so I had to stay home. Oh, you had to stay home. Yeah. Right, right. I was, well, I'm you watching. missed an amazing show. You missed it. was prolific. We had prolific people there. It was Mustafa the Poet, Daniel Caesar, and you didn't come. How did you do it after? You're so fake. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe that. No, I'm, and you know what would have been really bad? What? I could have said, great, I was there. Oh, you could have lied. Yeah. And I would have not, I would have known you if you were there. You think so? Yeah, of course. I think, I think. I would have asked like six people here, be like, did he come? I learned a long time ago on this show to not They lie. all came. I was talking to them. I learned a long time ago on this show. You should have come. It was so good. Well, I apologize. I, I sounded amazing too. Anyways, go ahead. I, I learned a long time ago on this show not to lie about going to a show whether or not you liked an album or a, a record right. or anything like that. You can tell me if you hated my record. I really didn't. I really liked your record. Now I don't know how to feel. I, wanna, I, I, wanted, I don't want to skip ahead. I really liked your record. You did? But to like your record, I felt for you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a tough year, man. What, what happened? Do you want to? It was just a, like, a, it was like a, a lot of things, but mostly like a little breakup. Not little. It was uh, it was um, colossal. But I mean, now I'm like better than I ever have been. You know, it's crazy. The cliche, you know, like things get better. Like, yeah, they do. And I, I believe that. And I think in the past two weeks, it's like proven it to me. I feel like the world's just kissed me on the forehead. And then I'm just like <laughs> feeling amazing now. What do you mean? Like uh, uh, you were feeling, you were feeling low. You got you had an experience to break up. Yeah, like rock bottom. I think that uh, just in everything, um, creatively, spiritually, just super low. Really? Because because yeah, it, I'm from. Can I tell you? Like, I, I think I said this to you when you came in. Um, all jokes aside, when you came in, I really love talking to you. And sometimes what happens when I get to talk to people right when they're like big records about to come out is I feel like. I got real love for them when I watch them, like whether like I saw them right before their album, their movie came out and I get to watch them at the Oscars and I'm kind of rooting for them like a friend, you know, and I, I felt that way about you when, you know, at the Grammys and I've seen everything you were doing. From the outside, everything looked pretty rosy. Of course, optically I make things look perfect, but you know what, the, <laughs> <laughs> internally it's like, a, it's a whole other thing. I think that, um, I was going to say something, but I forgot. I got ADHD. No, I'm just really good looking. So, the, uh, <laughs> wow. No, tell me, uh, 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 you you went from Venice in Italy to Toronto 
got right off stage at four o'clock. You probably had sound check at like six or something. Yeah, like it was that. insane. And then you played a full show last night. And then it was an amazing that I hear show. was amazing. Yeah, and you the, missed out on. And then the next day, you're, you're, well, that's uh, I'm actually upset. I can tell. I, I thought we had like you know like some type of a bond. Can I tell you the truth? Sure. I didn't know about it. That's the truth. See, now that's that's not my fault. That's my promote. That's my team's fault. No, I didn't know about it. And they probably invited me, but we're in this we're in this film, and they definitely invited me. But I'm in this film thing, and I probably just didn't see it. And had I known, I would have gone. I don't know if I believe you, but... Um, make you feel a bit better? It did make me feel better. Okay. I didn't know about it. Vanessa can, um, Vanessa can vouch that I didn't know about it. I said to her, how was... She said, I went to see him last night. And I said, oh, I didn't know he played last night. See? She's vouching for me over there. Okay. See? All right. See, because I, I know how fake these things can get, and I feel like you're a real person. I can't do the fake thing, man. Yeah, I got to no. tell you. Yeah, I know. You're a real girl. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay. All right, well, That's then, how I come back, because I really, really despise being interviewed like what? i hate it why not from you though oh thanks because it feels so performative yeah although my life is very perform- performative and i only allow a compressed version of my personality to be like presented to the world but um i don't know here it's like you're oh, a good guy thanks can we listen to one of the songs on the record pick one lay it on me what <laughs> That's just what I say. That's what they said in like the sixties. I feel like I'm Benjamin Button here talking to you. It don't matter if Hold on, we're listening to it. Wait, leave this in the clip. Right. Oh, one thousand percent. We're not getting rid of anything. In in seriousness, uh, that's the Dispose of Me by Omar Apollo. I love this song. I really love this song. I really thought it was beautiful. Thank um, you. But it was—it's a devastating record. It's a sad record. Are you writing these songs while you're going through the breakup, while you're going through the sadness, or are you sort? Do you need to sort of process it and then look back on it? This record in particular, the whole album was happening in real time. Yeah, which was like really fucked up. I was like, uh, I guess when it comes to love other people and their jobs they can kind of com- compartmentalize and do their job and then like deal with their emotions later but me i'd have to go to work and like reflect and like really be introspective about my relationship and how i feel and my emotions and how they surface and what i'm actually going through as opposed to you know going and you know not having to think about it how did you feel when you listened back to it in the car i was like damn this shit's fire yeah i was like there's some bars in here but like <laughs> that's it but as far as that i mean like because i don't know i think people are like oh does music heal you or does it help you like do this or i'm like no like not not as a person who writes it uh maybe really? i might listen to a song that 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 does it for me but when it comes to me and my writing and me trying to i guess process things it probably makes it worse <laughs> really it doesn't help it makes things yeah i think the only thing that really works when you're going through like some like that that kind of heartbreak is like time so why do you do it why do you write these songs because that's my job I like, really i love first of all i love making music mm-hmm. and i think it's important that like there's like a time capsule of like uh, a moment you know i think that's that's really important um in, in an artist's career um to just go back and be like oh wow this is like you know when he was really f- fucked up and yeah. then now like the next record i'm like now i'm just i feel amazing i haven't felt this good in uh two years what changed i think i just perspective i, I you know i went through some terrible things personally um with work with everything it's like in general um, and then everything just kind of got better recently. Did you, do, did you do something different? Yeah. No, I didn't do ayahuasca or nothing. I'm just vibing. Oh, yeah. I love this moment. Do we have that moment in Empty? There's a verse I loved in Empty I wanted to ask you about. Sure. Uh, can we play a little bit of it? Cantando en otro lenguaje pa que no me entiendes No quiero que sepas cuanto me duele no quiero verte 
Quiero tenerte todos los días. Todos los días. I got I got two two questions about this. So when I first heard that, I was like Oh, at first, I don't speak Spanish, so I was like, I don't know, I don't know what that means. Yeah, so, that was the point. Yeah, so, well, that's that's so smart. <laughs> the, the lyric is, I mean, do you want to do it? Uh, you could say it. S- singing in another language, so you don't understand me. Right. I don't want you to know how much it hurts me. I don't want to see you. I don't want to have you every day. Um, that idea of singing in another language, so you don't understand me, <laughs> is so smart. W- 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 do you remember when you came up with that? Yeah, I, th- I definitely was. Um... I was with my parents a lot, so like the Spanish was just like coming. Yeah, you speak um, Spanish around the home. Yeah, mm-hmm. like they were they were in the studio. My dad was in the studio like twelve hour days. He'd wake me up in the morning and be like, "Like vamos a chambear," like which means like let's go let's go to work let's go to work because he loved watching me make music and he would just sit there and then he'd throw me ideas. He actually helped me with the end of that verse um, when I said "todos los días." He was like, "You just say todos los días," like. And I was like, okay, there's a bit, there's a clip of it. It's like on YouTube, but mm-hmm. it's so funny. Some full circle to hear you talk about your folks being in the studio with you and like being so on board. I remember last time you and I were talking, you, you were sort of like talking about how you still, you had to sort of talk them into the idea of this being a good idea for you to be a professional musician. And you know, yeah, I mean, things change when you start to make a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. And then like people like also their, their circles were, you know, we're coming up to them like, oh, my Omar's doing so well. And, you know, mm-hmm. They're like, oh, Omar's doing well. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> um, they're like Grammys. <laughs> what's the What's the thing that my you're... mom doesn't know about this movie though? She doesn't know about the Luca movie. Mm, no, I didn't tell her. You know, I haven't seen it. I can't see it. I tried to see it. And oh, you did. I can't see it. And you, TIFF, they're playing it. Yeah, but yeah. I couldn't get a I couldn't get an advanced copy of it. Why not? Well, you can go to TIFF now. It's all sold out, man. It sold out? Yeah. Every screening sold out. I might be able to make something happen for you, Tom. But I don't know, because you didn't come to my show. So oh, maybe not. fuck. All right. Get one for Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. At least I know about this one. What's the end of the record where your mom speaks to you? His mom is speaking in Spanish. I don't. I, that I, was outside of this castle in Versailles on top of uh, the grass or underneath this tree. You were on vacation with your folks? Or? Yeah. I okay. brought them to Paris. And I brought them to London. Um, had they I, been before? Had they never? Wow! I was living there mm-hmm. for like a month. Mm-hmm. No, not month. Whole summer. I was yep. there for the whole summer writing the record, and then I was like, I want to bring them out, you know, like. And they were super down. My mom was in Portugal for some like Catholic walk. Yeah, uh, maybe around Fatima. Yeah, yeah. She lo- she loves that. Yeah, that's her vibe. It's mm-hmm. um, crazy. Story. So she came from there, mm-hmm. and then um, my dad came from Indiana. So they arrived separately, and they hate not traveling together. Mm. Um, but they made it, and then, um, yeah, I just was like, you know, we should go to Paris. You know, like, oh, what do you want to do? Da, da, da. Like, oh, let's go, you know, look at the castles or whatever. I think we watched a Marie Antoinette movie with uh, Kirsten Dunst. Mm-hmm. And I was like, we should go there. Like, you know, she was like, I'm down. Like, you know. She didn't say I'm down. Mm-hmm. She was like, yes, let's go. <laughs> let's go. I want to go. <laughs> um, so then, uh, <laughs> so then um, we we go. And I, I write Plain Trees underneath this tree, too. That's the song with Mustafa on the record. Yeah. Beautiful um, song. So I write the first verse of Plain Trees when I'm laying underneath the tree when my mom is saying the story that happens at the end of Glow. Mm-hmm. Um, she's telling me about how they used to make, um, I think it's tortillas or or uh, gorditas back in the day with her dad. And like, they, she was just explaining how like they would have these giant leaves and they would cook with these leaves and then have like a wooden oven that my grandpa built, whose name is Apolonio, which is like Omar Apollo. It's where I'm named like after oh, him. Oh, lovely. Yeah. So when I go to Mexico the, at the house, they have a huge sombrero that says Apolonio on it and I'm just like dang I was like I really made that name stick but anyways <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so then um, yeah so I had that video I took a video of her speaking yeah. and uh, my dad is also there and we were just laying in the grass Yeah. and that audio clip is from uh, the video uh, honestly what, why did you want to put that on the record I feel like that's meaningful to you to put that on the record yeah you know my brother called me uh, one time when I was driving and, and he was like you know, you left all of your siblings a gift. 
like we're always gonna you know when they pass and we get older and like you know he's starting to have kids so he's thinking like um you know he's thinking like a dad mm -hmm. and he's thinking about grandma and grandpa and all these things mm -hmm. um and he was like you know like when we don't have them anymore we're, we're always gonna have this like this is like immortalized mm -hmm. And um, he's like, I just want to say, like, it was a gift. And I'm really happy that you did that. And I was like, wow, you know, it's very profound of you to say. Uh, my brother is, like, that's, amazing. That's beautiful. I look up to my older brother a lot. How much he's, older? He's uh, 30. Yeah, so, and you're? 27. Oh, just a little bit older, right? Mm -hmm. My brother's nine years older than me. My sister's 12 years older than my me. My sister's 11 years older than me. We have What's so much going, in What's common. going on here? <laughs> what are you trying to do, Tom? <laughs> Not go to your show. What is the... Uh, Whoa! Oh, come I'm on. I'm only joking. Your mom was like the album title. Yeah, oh, yeah. She asked me. It was so funny. I said, she said, what's the album called? I said, God said no. She's like, por qué? <laughs> She's like, why? She's like, do you believe in God? I was like, yes, of course I do. And um, You do? But, yeah. I'm not religious, but I do believe in God. And, and I told her... Um, that I felt like this whole thing that I wanted, I felt like it was for me, that it was um, like fate. I was like, this is for me. Like, I'm, this is what I want. What, your and, job uh, or your relationship or? My relationship. Oh, your past relationship. I was like, ooh, forever. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then I think that it was very quickly proven. God said no. It was like kind of covered. It came from a conversation in the studio with a bunch of my friends. Yeah. And uh, one of them said, God said no. And I was like, wow, that kind of ate. Um, especially I like strong wording. So it looked cool. It looked like, you know, all these. And also, like, it makes a lot of sense because I have a really religious background. Do you? I can hear Catholicism, hey? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great wisdom in all the religions. And I think you just take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, I went to church recently with my brother. Mm hmm. And my little nephews, because I was in Indiana. Mass, like you went to the mass? Yeah. And then I just like was listening to the homily, and I was just, was like, what is this guy talking about? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you just yapping up there. <laughs> I'm like, yo. Like, what do you know? And okay. then at breakfast, I like brought it up to everyone at the table. I was like, you don't think what he said was like a little weird? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, Did you take communion? No, absolutely not. Right. That's a very personal question. I think. Thanks, for, <laughs> thanks for answering it. But it sounds like with the God Said No title, you said, um, hey, uh, there's something appealing about this idea of maybe not so much free will. So, so there being sort of a determining presence that's going to make some decisions. Yeah, I think there's an absolute energy that is going to decide things in your life. I don't know. Or I don't, I don't know. Free will is a, is a crazy thought. Because I think I believe in it, but I also think it's an illusion like a lot of things. So, mm, like, yeah, I mean, I have, I could literally, I could just smoke like four packs of cigarettes a day, ruin my voice, not sing anymore, not make music. Like, yeah, I have the feel, but I don't want that. You're very funny and, <laughs> and uh, fun to talk to you and a, a very profoundly deep thinker. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm I not... think it's, I think it's my biggest, like, um, like, uh, it's like why I can't sleep at night. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, no, I appreciate it. It's good. It's good to think about those things. Um, I think you are too. Thank you. Thank appreciate you. It. And a deep feeler. That's what I hear on this record. That's why I love sensitive. This record, you know. Yeah. Even when they're like musically, it's great. Um, but lyrically and emotionally, it's it's um devastating. It's really it's really powerful. Um, I wanted to ask you before you go about the the um the movie. My hot sauce. Oh, good. oh, yeah, I do want to ask you about the hot sauce. Thank I'm bringing you. it up. Look, do you want to see it? I have hot sauce right here. I got a hot sauce coming out. My mom made it. It's going to be at every Taco Bell in the nation. Don't play with me. You know what? But here's another example of you. Eat it. It's the best hot sauce in the world. Here's, an, here's another example of you being funny and eat the hot sauce. Ha, ha, ha. And I think this is also deep thinking because tell the story about, if you want to, about your mom opening that restaurant. Right. That okay. You. So my parents crossed the border as immigrants do. Um, and, and then um, yeah, yeah. they got a loan from the bank. I'm not going to say how. I don't wanna, <laughs> you don't have to. You don't I don't, don't, don't want to incriminate anybody. You don't have to. You don't have um, to. But I can get into it. I think they're fine now because they're citizens now. Like, um, But they had different names. <laughs> Anyways, they got a loan from the bank. I was born. There was, I had two brothers and a sister. 
Um, so they had three kids that they were watching over, and um, they had this restaurant. They had this, this taco called the Super Taco. It got super popping. They didn't understand the infrastructure of a business, the interdependence, how it worked, all these things. So they were very popular, but they didn't know how to make money off of it. Um, and then they hear getting, you know, everyone's coming in to get the taco, eat the hot sauce, boom, boom, boom. The hot sauce gets on the table. It's like super popping. They got like lines out the door. The door wasn't that, the restaurant yeah. wasn't that big. Yeah. Um, but, um, then I was born. Um, well, I was pregnant. My mom was pregnant with me while she was working there. And then um, after she had me, she decided she was going to sell. She's like, I can't keep the restaurant anymore. They they moved from Mexico. They wanted to have this dream. Yeah. And they wanted to, um, you know, do it differently than their parents. Mm. And they did, um, just not in this way. And I always felt kind of guilty. And I was like, you know what? Like, you know, I'm just going to make this hot sauce company. I was like, mom, send me the recipe. We're going to make a hot sauce. And we're going to put it out. And then, like, you're going to be, like, owning it. Like, you're going to be part owner or whatever. And um, she was like, okay, yeah. No, she didn't care. She was just like, okay, here, this is how you make it. Ah, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we got it made in like 2021. Um, then like, that was COVID time. Then Ivory happened. And then I didn't have time to kind of run the business. And then Taco Bell approached us. and was like. Taco Bell? Yeah. Wow. They were like, we heard you have a hot sauce. We want to put it in every sauce packet in the nation. And I was like, run that vibe. <laughs> Omar, that's unbelievable that your mom had to shut down her business because she had you and yeah. had to give up on that sort of dream. And now you are able to get that hot sauce she made that she had to shut down to a lot of different people. Yeah, that's, totally. That's meaningful. Yeah, yeah, so it's all about her. That's for my mom. I do I do that for her. Um, that's beautiful. Yeah. I know. We're not, we don't have to stay into that's beautiful. We can go back to the laughy laugh, but that's beautiful. That's really lovely. No, it, no it's, it is really beautiful. And my dad, too, he's super excited. I mean, they, they, they love cooking. It's like their, their thing. And my dad, like, uh, you know, is a, was a cook for, like, my mom was a lunch lady. And then she worked at a hair salon. And my dad also worked at the school. Um, so we'd see them at work all the time. I'd like, mm -hmm. go up to them and hug them and... and um, Everyone thought that that was supposed to be something you're embarrassed by, but I was like, I don't, I love my mom. I love my dad. Yeah. And my mom would always bring me out the hottest plate of food um, in nice. the lunch line. So, nice. um, yeah, I, I've always, we've, they're, they're always been taking care of me in that way. I feel like that's how you, you really show your love is from, like, nourishing your child with, yeah. like, food. I feel like that's where, like, immigrant parents, because emotionally, um, I feel like they emotionally develop later. Yeah. Um, and, and the only way they know how to show their love is through the food on the table and just make sure like, did you eat? Did you eat? Did yeah. you eat? Did you eat? Like, that's like how they show their love. Now they've learned to use their words and it's like a lot different. And yeah. my mama is actually a great writer. I told yeah. her, I said, I don't need presents because she wants to, I don't know what to give to you. I don't mm -hmm. know, like, you know, which, you know, these things or whatever. And I'm not around her as much. So she doesn't like know my new interests and all these things. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'd rather much rather receive a letter of like how you feel about and then leading up to my birthday she was it was insane actually she she was writing she remembered each day before she had me like for the week for like the seven days yeah and um and she gave me like a detailed description on everything that she was feeling on when i was um in her stomach yeah and then so it was just like a beautiful thing to receive and i was just like what a gift beautiful you know? But um, yeah, I love it. It, remind, it reminds me of something to, someone told me one time that on, on your birthday you should really thank your mom. Like, yeah, it's kind of her day too. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. As much sure. as it's your day, it's kind of more her day. I think birthdays aren't about the person. Yeah, I think it's about people celebrating the love they have for you. Um, before we go, I want to talk about the movie. So my my understanding in this movie queer. Oh, also, do you have any of the hot sauce? Can I try it? I had it in, in Venice, and they took it away from me at the airport. Can you send me some? I, was, I don't know because because <laughs> you have been just you didn't come to my show. I you, thought you cared about me. You cannot find another example of anything. You just keep on going back to that one. I do like that your style has improved. Thank you. I wore a hoodie last time. Yeah, and I, I did felt, too. I felt embarrassed about it, and then you came in wearing the hoodie, and I was like, "Oh, I think I'm okay." Yeah, yeah. Luca offers you the role. This is one of the biggest directors in the world. He offers you the role. It was insane. 
It was crazy. Had you acted? Or do you, are you an actor? No, never in my life. Who are you in the movie? Um, I play like um. Uh, I don't know if I can like. I don't okay, want to like give sure. it away. Okay, never mind. But uh, uh, what what's your reaction when he offers you the role? Well, I got in like an Instagram DM, mm-hmm. not from him, but from like somebody like, "Hey, Lucas, trying to reach out to you." Then it led to like a Zoom call. He met me, wanted to speak, see the energy. Um, he told me what the scene was. And I was like, word, I'm down. It's you. I'll do anything. I don't care. How did you prepare um, to act? How did you? Honestly, I was really scared. Yeah? Yeah, because I had never done anything like that before. Mm-hmm. Um, and this, and then there's like a nudity in the scene. So I was like, really like, oh, you know, I haven't mm-hmm. even like made like a porno with like one of my boyfriends ever. So right. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just like really like conservative in that way. Mm-hmm. And then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's not very conservative. <laughs> Well, no, I'm just saying, like, yeah. I know a lot of my friends, like, they definitely, like, make those type of videos with their, like, of course. partners. Yeah, of course, you know? of course. But not me. I never have. I understand. So I was just, like, I was, like, practicing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but in my head, I was, I had a, you know, and and it felt, like, uh, really freeing. Like, I released something, you know? And it felt so good. I was, like, uh, to be able to be, like, yeah, you know what, I'm just, like, this is acting and it's with Daniel Craig and I'm like this is so sick and with my favorite director like it's actually crazy I was like so down instantly said yes and then that's when I started to like be like oh whoa what did I say yes to um but I was so so energized and like I couldn't believe that that you know that they were they wanted me to be a part of the, like you know a William Burroughs like story, yeah. Um, queer, wearing a merch, yeah. But, um, yeah, and I don't know. I just, I, I have no words. And we just came from the premiere, and it was really emotional. And I heard like it a was twelve, like, thirteen minute standing ovation. Yeah, yeah. And I made sure it was longer. I was like, I like when it started getting quieter, like <laughs> eleven trying minutes. Trying to everybody up. At like eleven minutes, I was like, okay, all right, time for me to turn up. <laughs> start doing this. And then I agree. Yeah, I started doing it. Yeah. I was like, yep, we're gonna make this long. Um and uh it was just amazing experience. Venice Film Festival was insane. Amazing people, amazing cast. I'm like really blessed to have been like a part of it. Um and I just like built great relationships with everybody. Like they're just so cool. Everyone's funny and I'm f- hilarious after like two glasses of whiskey you're pretty, you're pretty funny now no i know but like when i'm drinking it's just a whole other level it's just like unfiltered mm-hmm. like i like there has to be specific people around mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like everyone knows not to pull out the camera it's like right, right. <laughs> yeah, get, get, get some of those like pockets that you have to like you know, you know yeah, those yeah. Phone pockets uh all right i got one more question for you um make it good I will not. <laughs> you set that bar low because this is coming. This is a favorite number question right here coming up. Um, how do you make sure that none of that stuff happens again? Like I think about someone like you. I like I, I was watching you from the outside. Like I said, I felt I felt a kinship with you last time you came on, and I, I was rooting for you at the Grammys. And when I would see your name come up on something, or I'd see you in, on Instagram, and you know, in one of Mustafa's stories, and I was just so happy for you, man. Like I was just so happy for you. Thank you. And uh, I didn't know you were hurting. I didn't know you were you were suffering, both spiritually and and relationship wise, and, and a bunch of other ways. Your life's not about to slow down. It's only about to get bigger. Yeah. No. How I, do you how do you look after yourself going forward? I think honestly, I've I've hit my lowest and I've hit my highest. I don't, everything I'm cool I'm not worried about it I know what it's like to be loved like I know what it's like to want to burst into tears every single moment of your life for a year like I know what that feels like and I know what it's like to feel have like amazing and admiration and, and I think that admir- admiration and hate or internal warfare, or whatever it is, or love, or all those things. It's a, you know, I've I felt it. I've been there. Um, now I'm like so much better. And I've asked people when that, like that are older. I was like, how do you deal with heartbreak? Like I'm just older. Yeah. Like this is you know you kind of just think the, the it wasn't my first like mm-hmm. the, like heartbreak. Mm-hmm. Like I've, I've like commodified my heartbreaks <laughs> since I was like 
18 years old. Mm -hmm. But um, this was different. I mean, yeah, just a, a, it consumed me. It took over everything. Everything that I had to offer was was um, was compressed and contained and um, like dormant. Um, even in conversation and the way that I was living, I was just trying to numb. I didn't want to feel anything at that time. I got into like ghosts so far into that. Um, but yeah, now I would say I'm I'm just in a way better state of mind. Like yeah. I understand myself way more. I understand the world um, differently, have different perspective on it, on people. And um, yeah, I think that the people in my life we're all assigned to each other. Um, and I feel like I don't have anyone that's like attached. That's like, you know, in a bad way, the dick draining way. Um, I feel like we're all meant to be, you know, the, the relationships in my life are harmonious and, you know, I just want to amplify them and, and make them great. You're not um, worried. You're not worried about it going forward. No, I wouldn't even want to live like that if if it was if, if i was living in in a state of worry it's like what you know i just want to watch like you know like i haven't seen the latest episode of house of dragons so gotta yes. check that out that'll that'll comp cure what ails you i'm just saying like the, the, yeah it's just like let's just be present I you know you. <laughs> um uh thanks for coming in yeah is this done are we done yeah i'm, I'm getting the i got a couple of these from the folks in the country, okay. you know what I mean? <laughs> a couple of these, you know? Yeah. Which is, you know? Right. Thanks for coming. I love talking to you, really, honest to God. And I, and I mean it. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I mean this. Don't lie. I mean Because I hate liars. Sure. Um, you're really funny and charming and fun. And um, this record uh, is so profound. And like I said, just an incredibly depth of thought and feeling. And Name five songs. And, uh, I will not. I will not.